In this video, I'm going to teach you the fastest way to learn to ride an electric unicycle, give you hundreds of tips and tricks on how to use them, including everything from carrying canoes to using the bathroom at a state park. But before I get into those tips, I'm going to try to convince you that if you have eyes and legs that work, an electric unicycle needs to be your next purchase. The electric unicycle is the most efficient vehicle in the world. I'm not saying this facetiously or to get you to watch this video. Having a wheel has changed my life. I am healthier, I am happier, and in addition to not spending money on gas anymore, it allowed my wife and I to sell our second vehicle. But it is even better than a vehicle because I can carry it around like a suitcase until a situation arises where I need to go 45 miles an hour. And every time I do this, I feel like I'm Tony Stark in Iron Man 2. It is incredibly empowering. Furthermore, electric unicycles are allowed pretty much everywhere because they are quiet, clean, and they don't take up a lot of space like bicycles. They are healthier for your joints because they allow you to stand while traveling instead of sitting. I have noticed a significant reduction in my back and neck pain issues now that I don't drive as much. And then lastly, they are just one motor and one wheel, so they don't consume a lot of energy. In fact, most of the time they consume less than 25 watts per mile driven, making them over 10 times as efficient as a Tesla which generally consumes about 300 watts per driven mile. So they are quite literally the most efficient vehicle in the world. So now that I've hopefully convinced you all to go buy one, let me teach you the fastest way to learn to ride one in three easy steps and then how to master it in six more steps. But before I get into these steps to becoming an EUC master, there are two important things that you need to keep in mind. The first one is that you are actually always falling. If you are good, you will be falling with style, but you are still falling. It is impossible for almost anyone to balance on a single wheel but the EUC will not let you fall forward or backwards. Rather, it will speed up or slow down to prevent you from falling either of those directions. In regards to left or right, it cannot help you. But where this becomes important is that the trick to staying on your wheel is to turn in the direction that you are falling so that it will keep you up. This will require you to engage your core muscles, which is another health benefit that I forgot to mention earlier. Now, when you are first beginning, you will need to make big directional changes to stay up. But eventually, those directional changes will become so small that you won't even know that you're doing it even up to 45 miles an hour. The second thing you need to keep in mind is the difference between explicit and implicit learning. Explicit learning refers to the learner's conscious and deliberate attempt to figure something out, whereas implicit learning refers to what we figure out without the awareness of what has been learned. Writing an EUC is all about implicit learning. This is bad news for the talented hotshot who can usually figure something out quickly because no one is talented enough to just jump on a wheel and ride it immediately. But this is great news for people that don't figure things out quickly because all you need to do is put yourself in a position where your body can learn and it will do all of the work for you. And you will eventually master the art with extremely minimal effort. So with that in mind, let's go into the nine steps that I have created to help your body implicitly understand riding an electric unicycle. Step one, find a pole with nothing around it and use it to get on your wheel. When you feel comfortable, start to go forward around the pole while still firmly holding onto the pole with one of your hands. If you are having trouble going forward or if your calves start getting tired quickly, move your feet further forward on the pedals. Keep doing this for at least 15 minutes. I know some of you will wanna move on to step two, but you have to keep in mind that the more you allow your body to learn in this stage, the less you will fall in other stages, which will actually allow you to go through them quicker. Some people spend over an hour on this stage and that is great. In fact, it might even be ideal. Once you get to the point where you are going around the pole really quickly and barely holding on to it, then and only then are you ready to move to step two. Step two, find a grassy area with a gradual downhill slope. It is important that it is a grassy area for two reasons. First, dropping your EUC on concrete really beats it up quickly, so a grassy area can mitigate the damage done while you are still learning. And then the second reason I will cover in step three. The reason I suggest having a gradual downhill slope is because going downhill requires less forward tilt, allowing your body to focus more of its attention on staying up. When you find a decent place, mount your wheel at the top of the slope, 
using something to assist you. If it is a pole, go ahead and circle it a few times to make sure you're comfortable. And then when you are ready, go ahead and start down the hill. As soon as you start to lose control, reach down and grab the handle and jump off. The purpose of step two is not to make it far, but rather to learn how to grab your unicycle as you dismount. It will not be graceful at first, but that's okay. Enjoy this moment. It is a once in a lifetime experience because once your body learns how to do it gracefully, you will never experience this stage again. After successfully dismounting and grabbing your wheel 20 times, which shouldn't take that long, you are ready to move on to step three. In step three, you finally get to learn how to ride. Just like step two, you will wanna be on a slightly sloped grassy area. Now, some people might tell you not to ride on grass at first because concrete is easier. They are right about concrete being easier but they are very wrong about learning on grass. In addition to protecting your wheel, as I mentioned in the last step, the second and more important reason to be on a grassy area is because falling on grass is not as painful. Since you will land on your feet most of the time, this might not seem important, but it is important because it gives you more confidence and you will likely not be as quick to bail. Those few extra milliseconds before you bail will give your body a lot more time to learn how to stay up, which is ultimately the key to being able to ride. Your body has to learn how to react when you start to lose balance. Now you can try to help your body. I already explained the process earlier where the key to staying up is turning your unicycle in the direction that you are falling. But even knowing what to do, it is very difficult to do this consciously. Ultimately, your body has to learn it implicitly. One thing that will help in this process is squeezing the wheel with your legs. That is not a euphemism, it is actually really important. Squeezing your legs around your wheel gives you more control and will help your body learn what to do faster. I also recommend exaggerating the bend in your knees and sticking your arms out like this. I know it looks ridiculous, but it will increase your reaction time by just enough to make a big difference. Your goal at this time is not to go in a straight line. If you are on a slope, you will probably go downhill, but it is not helpful to think of yourself going in a direction because you should feel the freedom to turn in any direction that allows you to keep staying up. So your real goal in this process is just to last eight seconds. Usually by the time someone can last eight seconds, their body has had enough time to figure out what to do and they can last forever. This is where things start to get really fun. In fact, I had one friend experience such extreme joy at this point from the thrill of writing that he fell off because he couldn't stop laughing. So when you get to this point, Go take a break from this video and just enjoy riding. You did it. You can now ride an electric unicycle. Enjoy this moment because even though I still have fun, the thrill that you are experiencing now is especially profound. This is also a good time to start driving on concrete, which as I mentioned earlier is a lot easier. And the more you ride, the more your body will learn and you will eventually become a master. That being said, if you would like to speed up this process to becoming a master, I have six more steps for you. Now up to this point, you will be dependent on poles, cars or the shoulder of a friend to help you get started. So in step four, we will learn how to mount your wheel without assistance. The trick to mounting without assistance is to put your dominant foot on its pedal and then push your leg really hard against your wheel while you lift your other leg onto the wheel, all while simultaneously tilting forward so that you get started. This will feel very difficult at first, so if you would like to get better at this quickly, I recommend setting up your dominant foot as if you were going to mount and then just jump ever so slightly with your non-dominant foot. Keep doing this over and over again, trying to get a little higher with your non-dominant foot over time. Once you reach about four to five inches, then try to keep it there for as long as you can. By doing this, your body will get rushed with opportunities to learn how to balance with one foot. In fact, by the time you are able to hold your foot up even for just a half a second, you will find that mounting your wheel is actually quite easy now. Step five, as you start getting more comfortable riding and start driving a little faster, you will experience more and more times when your wheel starts to wobble. It usually happens when you're slowing down, but it isn't exclusive to this situation. This can be extremely disconcerting for a beginner, and I've noticed that some intermediate riders still have some problems with it, so here are a few tips on how to get rid of it. The first thing I recommend is checking your tire pressure to make sure that it is lined up with the tire pressure listed on the rim of the tire. Too much inflation or too little can make a wheel more predisposed to wobble, but honestly, inflation is not the biggest cause of wobble. Rather, the most efficient way to prevent wobble is to make sure you are squeezing your wheel with your legs. If you have trouble doing this, your wheel might be the wrong size. Most wheels have a width ranging from five to seven inches. My wife does better on a five inch, 
and I do better on a seven inch. For more tips on buying an electric unicycle, make sure to check out the end of this video. Then if you still experience some wobble, even when you are firmly squeezing your wheel, put a little extra pressure on your wheel with only one of your legs. Obviously don't do this so much that you start to turn and you might wanna switch back and forth between the legs that apply the extra pressure. But the idea is to offset the balance just enough so that you can no longer wobble because ironically wobble is more likely to happen the more balanced you are. You won't be great at doing this at first. Just like everything else, you really need your body to figure it out, which takes time. But when that time comes, it is amazing. I can now accelerate and stop extremely fast and I never experience any wobble because as soon as the slightest tremor starts, my legs automatically adjust to stop it without me even realizing what I'm doing. Now, some suggest using a method called carving to avoid wobble. And while I agree that it is a fun way to help with it, I would argue that it is important to first learn how to remove it going in a straight line, but I can talk more about carving in a more advanced video. As you progress, you will notice that increasing your speed will get easier faster than turning will. So in step six, I recommend going to a parking lot and going in the smallest circle you are comfortable with. For some people, this starts out as a 50 foot circle and that is okay. Simply keep going in that circle, trying to either match your previous circle or making it a little bit smaller. You'll be surprised how quickly you are able to tighten your turn using this method. Once you get tight enough that you start getting dizzy, then I recommend switching to the other direction. And then when you get that one tight enough, I recommend switching to a figure eight motion. As you get more advanced, you'll eventually be able to do some balance shift turning, but I will cover that in an advanced tips and tricks video if I do one. Then for step seven, I recommend trying to go as slow as you can. Going slow is actually a lot harder than going fast and it will really hone your balance skills. And it is extremely important because one of the beautiful things about the electric unicycle is that you can ride it on sidewalks and if you are going to share sidewalks with pedestrians there will be times that you have to go as slow as someone walks and if you're wobbling around trying to keep your balance it is going to freak them out so just take some time to go as slow as you possibly can at this point you are getting pretty advanced your wheel will start to feel like an extension of your body instead of you directing it it will seem like it is just reading your mind kind of like what i imagined it would feel like to ride a magic carpet Unfortunately, unlike a magic carpet, you are still stuck on the ground, so you need to know how to deal with rough terrain. The main trick to this is keeping your knees bent so that they become your shock absorbers. Going off-road is actually quite pleasant, even on a small 14-inch, and it is quite the dream on an 18-inch. But no matter how big your tire is, it is important to keep your knees bent so that you aren't thrown off your wheel. As you encounter bigger bumps, it will be helpful to go through the motion of a jump as you hit the obstacle so that there is less weight on your wheel at the time it hits the obstacle. And then as you get truly advanced, you can even jump curves, but I will cover that more if I do an advanced tips video. Then for our last and final step, we will cover carrying things. As you get really advanced by spending a lot of time on your wheel, you will eventually reach the point where you can do anything on your wheel that you could do standing. This is crazy because we can do a lot more standing than we can do walking or running. We can carry more, interact more, and we are more aware of our surroundings. I've used my wheel to single-handedly do the job of 10 people without even breaking a sweat. It has opened up new possibilities that I never considered and I still discover new opportunities for fun almost every month. But all of these things are very advanced. When you first get started, the idea of carrying a chair, much less a child, will be unthinkable. That is good. Do not try to force this. There will come a day when you feel so comfortable that you know with 100% confidence that you can do something safely. But until that day comes, you should not do it. Because as I've mentioned many times, riding an electric unicycle is is not about explicit learning, but rather implicit learning. Do not try to force things that you are not ready for. Almost every time I have fallen, it is because I tried to impress someone or tried to push my limits. If you keep riding, you will eventually be able to do everything, but you have to wait. It just takes time. Okay, so those are the nine steps, including 145 tips and tricks for the electric unicycle, but I also have 72 more for you. If you are looking for something fun to do with your electric unicycle, you should look at bike trails. Paved bike trails are very relaxing and enjoyable, whereas mountain bike trails are a lot of fun. A beginner difficulty mountain bike trail will feel like a medium difficulty with your wheel, and 
they are a lot of fun. Advancing to a medium difficulty gets really hard and is even more fun, and I don't know if it's actually possible to do hard mountain bike trails because I haven't tried it yet. It is important to be careful around gravel or other slippery surfaces because if you lose traction with your wheel, then it obviously can no longer keep you upright. So if you end up running into gravel or something like that, try not to turn too sharply and do not accelerate or decelerate too quickly. Just stay as upright as possible until you have made it to the other side. Ice is particularly bad in this regard, and while it is possible to take the same approach with short patches of ice, if you stay on ice too long, you will eventually fall. This footage was recorded during the giant snowstorm in Texas many of you heard about. We live in Texas, and if you want to hear our story from that time, make sure to check out this video. Get in the habit of bringing your wheel with you even if you don't think you'll need it. You'll be surprised how often having an extra vehicle with you opens up new options. I've had a friend use it to go to a gas station when his car ran out of gas, and there have been countless times that I've been able to run and go grab something real quick while the rest of the group is using the car. Speaking of which, having a wheel makes dropping a vehicle off or picking it up at a mechanic an absolute dream. Simply put the wheel in the car with you and then drive home after dropping it off or vice versa. Everyone that I know that has a wheel has told me that it has changed their life at least at some level. So I think that every company on earth should consider how this technology could affect their business. I have personally gotten a lot more effective at my job. I work with college students on a campus where parking is limited and expensive. So being being able to drive without needing to park has been a game changer. My friend who works at a research facility says that his ability to travel between departments saves him tons of time every day and has opened up new opportunities. Basically, if being able to walk 45 miles an hour sounds like it might be helpful to your job, you guys should consider it. I've even wondered what this technology might look like for the military. Being able to travel 45 miles an hour silently on any train without getting tired while being steady enough to use your weapon or equipment and then being able to jump off at any moment that sounds like a game changer to me but i'll let you guys decide how it works in your context it is also amazing to have a wheel when you're camping between joy rides through trails carrying trash to the dumpster or speeding over to the camp office to grab something real quick there are an unbelievable amount of uses in fact i remember one time when i really needed to go to the restroom early in the morning and i couldn't find my shoes fast enough i was able to use my wheel to protect me from having to put my bare feet on the gross bathroom floor. If you plan to make your wheel your main vehicle like I have, then I would recommend also getting this travel backpack so that you have the option to carry lots of cargo. I've used it to carry over 50 pounds of car parts so that I could work on my vehicle. It is really expensive, but barely a fraction of what you'd be saving by selling your vehicle. In fact, you could get heated jackets, full setup of protective gear, expensive rain gear, a custom electric unicycle stand, and pretty much anything else you could think of for just a small fraction of what a vehicle costs. Speaking of helmets and protective gear, let's talk about the two most important things you need to keep in mind about helmet safety. The first one is obviously speed. If you're going really slow and over grass, I do not think it is important to always wear a helmet because unlike a bicycle, you can easily jump off on your feet at those slow speeds. And not wearing your helmet can sometimes give you extra awareness which can help your body learn faster. But for liability's sake, any fall at any speed can be lethal. And even though I just used my robot voice, I recognize that that statement is true. It doesn't include any of the nuance, but it is a true statement. And then of course, once you start getting faster, your situation changes quite a bit. It might feel like you could still land on your feet and you might be able to, but the problem is that as soon as you hit that limit where you can't catch yourself, you're in serious trouble. So make sure to wear a helmet. Now, some of you might be wondering whether or not you should wear a traditional bike helmet or if you should upgrade to a dirt bike helmet. I would argue that if you are using this as your functional vehicle and you are not a daredevil personality, it is actually safer to use a traditional bike helmet because it gives you access to more of your peripheral vision, making you much more aware of your surroundings. You have to keep in mind that a wreck, even with a helmet, could be extremely dangerous. So make sure to be careful even if you are wearing a helmet. That being said, if you are planning to drive alongside cars or do stunts at high speeds, then I might recommend upgrading to a dirt bike helmet to be safe. And the dirt bike helmet also looks a lot cooler, which, let's be honest, 
Sometimes that's a big deal. The second thing you need to keep in mind are people and animals. Even if you get to the point where you never fall, if you are driving around people, animals, or especially people in cars, you have to keep in mind that they often do things that you can't expect. And due to our limitations on one wheel, those unexpected situations could lead to a serious wreck. So we need to be extra cautious when we are riding around people or animals. Pushing a jogging stroller is a great way to transport or entertain your kids, but I recommend waiting until you get to at least step six because if you are not experienced enough, you will be tempted to put some of your weight on the stroller and that will cause you to crash. The only way to push a stroller is to stay independent of it during the process and that takes a little bit of skill. When you drive long periods of time, your feet can sometimes feel like they are falling asleep. The easiest way to get rid of this is just to get off and walk your wheel for a little while. It doesn't take very long before they're almost completely reset. And then once you get more advanced, you can also engage your toes like this, which will also get rid of it. When you start to use your wheel to run errands, which is amazing because it makes running errands a lot of fun, make sure to set Google Maps on walking so that it includes sidewalks and other paths that cars don't have access to. And keep your eye open for shortcuts because often cities have places where simply jumping a curb could cut five minutes off your route. When you are driving on sidewalks, I recommend driving on the left side of the road so that it is easier to see oncoming traffic and when a car is going to turn in front of you. I also recommend doing this if you have a huge shoulder you're working with, but if you are working with a small shoulder or a bike lane, then you will want to ride with traffic. This can be very nerve wracking at times because you will not feel as secure as you would on a bicycle and you are also less visible than a bicycle so you might want to wear bright clothing. Filming on an electric unicycle is amazing. The equipment that filmmakers use to record shots like this costs thousands of dollars and you usually can't fit them in tight spaces like this. Now, obviously a drone can fit anywhere than an EUC can, but drones are loud and make recording audio difficult, whereas a wheel is completely silent. Now, obviously your cameraman needs to get to step nine before he's able to film something like this, which will take a couple months, but it is both the cheaper and better option, so I think it is worth it. When you are buying an electric unicycle, you wanna keep several things in mind. Bigger wheels are generally smoother rides when your trail is not completely flat, and they often have higher max speeds. Smaller wheels, on the other hand, are easier to maneuver and are generally much lighter, making it easier to carry them around with you. The width of a wheel is also important. I am six foot four inches tall, and I have noticed that it is a lot harder for me to squeeze the frame of EUCs that are only five inches thick. My wheel is seven inches thick, which has been perfect for me. As I mentioned earlier, I never experience wobble anymore, but my wife, who is five foot seven inches, prefers her five inch thick wheel. So you really wanna match it with your height. The next and probably most important thing you should consider when buying a wheel is what kind of battery it has on it. Obviously, you will wanna choose the speed that you wanna go, but you have to keep in mind that when a battery says that it will take you 100 miles, it really means that it can take you 50 miles at that top speed, 30 miles at about half speed, and then 20 miles miles at such a slow speed that you would never want to ride it. The reason for this is because in order to keep you from never falling forward, the wheel needs to reserve enough power to move fast enough to force you to lean backwards and therefore slow you down. As your battery gets lower, your wheel has to slow down your top speed so that it can reserve this margin of power. And then eventually when it gets low enough, it will force a tilt back so strong that you will have to stop and it won't let you drive anymore. It's actually pretty amazing. This has only happened to me once, but I will I will never forget it because I was stuck in the middle of nowhere and my wife had to come pick me up. So my recommendation and the recommendation I hear from almost every wheel owner I know is to buy a battery that is much bigger than what you think you need. The easiest way to do this is to buy a wheel that goes faster than you are wanting to go. All of them have governors so you can limit the max speed where you want it. But obviously going slower on a bigger wheel will give you a lot of extra battery. I bought my wheel from eWheels.com and as I've looked at the different options, they seem to be the best place to get a wheel. So I reached out to them and they were willing to give me an affiliate code. So if anyone wants to use the link that I have put in the pinned comment and description of this video, in addition to giving me a small kickback, they will give you some extra options for free shipping and they will throw in some risk cards as well. Though if you follow the nine steps in this video, you probably won't need the risk cards. Well, that's it guys. I hope that helps. This channel normally covers mobile games, but this has been such a big part of my life that I had to make a video on it. If this video gets lots of views, 
I will try to make an advanced tips video for you guys. I also plan to make a few real life action videos with my family riding together on the gameplay channel to see how they do because making a video like that sounds like a lot of fun. So if you're interested in just watching a family having fun riding, then make sure to watch this playlist. And then lastly, I might have an opportunity to combine mobile games and my wheel because there is a game coming out where you can shoot superpowers in real life. And I think it'd be pretty fun for me to play on my wheel. But that game won't come out for a while, so we'll see what happens when it does. All that to say, I'd love for you to subscribe to this channel if you're interested, but I'm not actually sure what I'm going to be doing next, so you'd be kind of signing up for an adventure. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.